Welcome back tight wads. It is January in Georgia the, near the end of January. We've had a lot of good cold spells uh, actually had a little bit of light dusting of snow last weekend so it is time to trim our crepe myrtles back. As you can see I have three crepe myrtles in the front of my house and I'm going to show you today I'm going to show you today the proper way to do it. Uh, the things you need are some gloves. I like to use the really thin kind but just so my hands don't get scratched. I wear my safety glasses so stuff doesn't get in my eyes. And I have two different types of cutters. I have the regular um, pruning shears and then also or loppers and then I also have some handheld units that make it a little easier to get the details correct. So we're going to get in a little bit closer and show you the proper method for trimming your crepe myrtle. Alright so what I like to do is find the cut from last year, so the previous year's cut and right here it's on it's here on this one and I only want to leave two branches coming up from that area of the tree so each branch each uh, main trunk coming up I only want to leave two shoots coming off at the most because next year I'm gonna have all these other small ones coming off but I want the new growth to come off this year's cutting so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this area around it you can do this with either your loppers or your hand shears Go ahead and trim off all these small ones. You can go back and clean it up later. Uh, you need to make sure you're wearing your safety glasses because as you do it, stuff falls out of the tree and into your eyes. Go ahead and cut off this one. So now I'm up here where my cutting from last year is. And on this one, I really only have one good piece coming off. Uh, so I might go ahead and cut it down. I'll probably leave this one and this one. So I'm gonna trim this one off. And then these, you cut above the previous year's cutting a few inches. So I'm gonna go up and leave about six to eight inches on this section. And if you notice, you can see some of the tip of it because I cut it at an angle. So it's best to cut it at about a 45 degree angle. So this one's good to go. You can pull off some of the smaller stuff. And then I just pull off all the little suckers that have formed around it. And some people go in and trim this middle piece uh, just for aesthetics in the winter time, but it really doesn't matter if this is still here when next year's growth comes out. This particular uh, breed of crepe myrtle is going to sprout out all over the place anyway. It doesn't just have the big long shoots as you can see. It goes up and branches off into multiple branches, whereas some of them just uh, go up and look like a fountain spraying out of the top. So I'll go ahead and move over here to the next one. I'll trim off all the low stuff. This one only has one really good shoot coming out of it. So I'm only gonna leave one. I'm gonna cut it about the same height as the others. There are two different theories when cutting crepe myrtles back. Uh, some people like to make them rounded on the top. I like those that trimming method for the ones that come out like a fountain. But for mine, I like a nice straight across uh, edge on the top of all my trees. I try to trim all three of my trees the same height uh, so that they look good throughout the winter. Um, right now they just look like a big dead pile of mess. But they look nice once you trim them down all flat. And in the spring uh, they'll grow out fine. It doesn't matter which way you print them back as far as the growth patterns in the future. But it's just whatever you like it to look like in the winter in my opinion. So with this one, I left one. Uh, this other one, I'm going to go ahead and take off this whole shoot. Because it's not doing well. You can see it didn't grow any new growth off of last year's growth. Everything came off the previous year. So I just took the whole thing off. And my trees fill out really well each year. As long as you keep pruning them back, uh, they'll fill out really well. So as long as you have a, a shoot or two in each area of the tree, you're not going to notice a difference after, the, difference after the first few weeks of growing season. Uh, with this smaller stuff, you can really just pull down and break it off. When you pull down, it just snaps. And that works out just fine for you. So you, you just continue this process all over the tree, trying to get them all even and even height, and then you can move on. Uh, I'll show you the product as we get a little farther along. Okay, as you can see, I've cut all of my branches about six to eight inches above the growth from last year, and I've pulled off all the little pieces that hang down on each of the um, branches just to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, it's not a necessary thing. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it look nicer for the winter months. 
Uh, if there's any bark peeling off, just leave it. It'll fall off on its own. Now I need to repeat the process on the other two trees. And since they're all clustered, I'm going to make them all this height. So all my trees will be the same height across the top, even though one sits a little bit lower elevation than the other two. All right, now you can see the finished product. I have pruned all three of my trees. They're approximately the same height. Uh, they are pretty much straight across. I won't say I did a perfect job uh, because I have some other work to do today. And I've loaded all the materials in the back of the truck and I'll take them to the local recycling center. Uh, if you do haul this way, make sure you're responsible and cover your load in the back of your truck so that it doesn't uh, litter the roadways. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch another one of my videos. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, ask any questions you might have in the comments section below. Be sure you click to subscribe uh, so you can see other videos about maintenance around the lawn or making repairs in your home or maybe to your lawn equipment. If you'd like to see a video showing the proper way to deadhead roses, please click the video in the top left. If you'd like to see a great video showing how to get rid of your fire ants for good, click the video in the top right. Hope you guys have a great day.